Hey everybody, this is the second video in a series that talks about Fury of Tritus. It's an entry in the 2016 Board Game Geek Solitaire Print and Play Contest. The first video showed the theme of the game and how to set it up. In this game, or in this video, I'll show you a couple of rounds of play, or maybe some highlights. I might fast forward as I play it, just pick out a few things that you might find interesting. So to start the game, you're going to begin the first round. The game is played in a series of rounds. Each round has the same five steps. If you forget what the steps are, you can always look at the back of the mini rulebook here with a quick reference that shows you the five steps in order. So the first step is called the Oracle step, in which case you look at this first card in the Tide. If you remember from the first video, it's called the Oracle. So let's see what the Oracle tells us to do. In this case, it says draw two ships, and then if there are any uh, ships on the table with that cloud symbol, those weather-related ships, then they'll move forward one space. So first step is draw two ships. We will draw a creature ship. In this case, it has four hull, the creature symbol and two sails, so it's going to move two spaces when it moves later in the round. Second ship will be a weather ship. It has three hull, not too bad, but it has three sails, so it's pretty fast. It only has one pearl in its treasure, though. That might come up later. So you also put that guy on top of the Sea of Man. That's the starting space. As they move, they will move throughout the game from space to space, and as they reach the Lost Sea here, they will round it by hitting these three spaces. You can see it does have three spaces, unlike other seas. They will then continue back on these spaces, and if they ever end up in the Sea of Man, then you've lost the game, if any ship does, because they've stolen your treasure and you lose your power and you get sad and go home. But if you destroy all the ships, all 27 ships, then you win the game. So that was the first step, the Oracle step. Well, I didn't perform the second action, which said all cloud ships move forward in space, so that guy will actually move forward right now. The second step is called the Power Step. The power step says, hey, you can play your cards in your hand. You can either play them for their power effect here, or you can put them in your treasure pool and acquire these, these icons to buy other cards or power other cards. Here at the beginning of the game, pretty sure I'm not going to use these harvest crabs here in the first turn, so I'm going to place these in my treasure pool. You can do that at any point in your turn. You can play cards, put them in the pool, whatever you like. Uh, I also have this Howling Wind card. Notice it's a weather card there. The type is weather. That means I cannot play it to affect this weather ship here. Remember, that's a weather ship. Uh, likewise, I could not use those Harvest Crabs to affect the uh, creature ship if I wanted to because uh, it is of a type of creature. It is a creature type. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and take this Howling Wind card. I'll also put that in my treasure pool. May not use that icon, but we'll see. That leaves me with four Crashing Waves. Each of these cards does a single point to a ship. So I can divide these four damage between any ships I like. Uh, they are of type Fury, as you can see, which means they can affect any ship, or rather no ship is immune to them. So I'm going to go ahead and spend three, I'm sorry, two of those four like this. I'm going to do two of them to the cloud ship, and I will do two of them to the creature ship, leaving the creature ship with one, two and the cloud ship with one. Now why didn't I just go ahead and, and destroy that cloud ship. Well, there's a reason for that. We'll see here in a turn or two. I have left these icons in my treasure pool, two shells, a pearl, and a trident. So I can use those to buy cards from the tide. So <clears throat> the Kraken, for example, has a cost of two shells and two tridents. So I can't buy that since I only have one pearl and one trident. Let's look at greed sharks. Pretty good card. Aha. So its cost is one shell, one pearl, and one trident. I have two shells, one pearl, and one trident, so I can buy this guy. He goes in my discard pile. And I have a shell left over from that Howling Wind card, which I can't really use, so it'll just end up getting discarded along with my other cards. That ends the power step. Now we need to refill our hand, which we do by drawing the next six cards. and we need to refill the tide. You refill the tide by taking the oracle if it was not purchased and you put it back under the deck. If it was purchased there would be a spot there and there's no big, and nothing happens to it. You then slide the other remaining cards toward the tide, the tide deck. This card becomes the new oracle and you refill the remaining spots. In this case we're putting out some rip currents and the doldrums. The final step in a round is to move the ships that are in play. Here we have a three-sailed cloud ship. That means he moves three spaces. He's going to move one, two, and three. So we'll end up here in the razor sweep. 
And then the creature ship over there has two sails. So he will move one, two. Things are kind of cramped here in the video view. You can have multiple ships in the same sea at any time. That's not a problem. In fact, it can be advantageous depending on what card you have in your hand. At that point, the round is over and you begin the next round with, of course, the Oracle step. So let's look at that again. Lightning Strike here says draw two ships. And if a ship is in a harbor sea space, then you repair one hull point. Nobody is in a harbor sea space. The harbors are here at the Lost Sea. As you can see, it has a harbor symbol. The Sea of Man is one, and the Prosperiad, those islands, if you can't see it, also has one. So, we just draw two ships according to the Oracle. We get a cloud ship and a big old eyeball ship. Those both go in the Sea of Man. And now we play some cards. I have two Harvest Crabs, which I'll go ahead and show you how those work and three crashing waves. I'm going to go ahead and play these three crashing waves. I'm going to spend two of those to destroy this ship. I'm just going to go ahead and get him out of the way. He was at two hull from the previous turn, so he's destroyed. He gets discarded. And then I have one more point. I will use that against, let's see, this eyeball ship here, why not? Leaving him with four hull. And I'll have a Howling Wind card. Uh, I can't use this because it is a weather type card and the only ship that I can really affect with it is over here and the Razor Sweep and he's a cloud ship, he's a weather ship. Uh, these cards are both in the beginning space and Howling Wind says you move a ship forward and then you move another ship backward. Since I can't move a ship backward, since I can't affect that guy, this guy is kind of useless this turn. So I'm going to put him in my treasure pool. I'll go ahead and play the Harvest Crabs though. Harvest Crabs have uh, they're sort of a utility card. They have three options when you play them. You can either scuttle a card in your discard pile. Scuttling is the remove from play or culling or whatever you want to call it. Trashing, sometimes it's called mechanic in the game. Or I can scuttle this card if I'm really done with it. Or if a second creature card or if a first pre creature park card was played this turn, then this, this guy actually does a point of damage. So I'm going to play Harvest Crabs to do that first option. I'm going to get rid of a Howling Wind out of my deck. I'm not feeling the weather cards this time, so I'm going to discard that guy. He's gone. My second Harvest Crabs, though, since I played another creature card this turn, which was another Harvest Crabs card, I'm going to go ahead and play this guy to do a point of damage to somebody. And in fact, I will do that point of damage to this eyeball ship right there. So he's already down to three hull. That's pretty good. At this point, I would take whatever is in my treasure pool. It's a single pearl. That's not going to be enough to buy anything, so I won't be buying anything this turn. Those get discarded. And then I will refill my hand by shuffling and redrawing. So I'll do that really quick. So I have my new hand. And finally, we need to refill the tide. The oracle, if you didn't buy it, gets slipped underneath the deck. Everything shifts down one. And you draw a new one. Finally, the ships move. So here's the exciting part that I was talking about. This guy's going to move three spaces. He's going to move one, two, three. He's down here in the Lost Sea. As soon as he enters this sea and this space, he actually picks up the treasure that is on the bottom there. If I destroy that ship now, I get to keep the treasure that was on the ship. So by allowing ships to enter the Lost Sea, you can actually destroy them and use those treasures to buy more cards while using cards in your hand to actually deal damage. So this guy moves two, and he moves two as well. The oracle step there says on the Kraken, it says X is the number of pearls in the cost of all cards in the tide, maximum of four. So we need to count the pearls that are in all of these costs. Uh, luckily, lucky day for us, there's only one pearl. It's there in the brine blobs. So we're going to draw one ship. Happens to be a creature card or a creature ship with five hull. So it goes out there. So that's pretty good because there's only one. Next we do our, our power turn, I'm going to use one Crashing Waves to do the last damage on this guy. So now instead of tossing this ship aside and discarding it, I keep it. I'm going to keep it down by my power deck, and I'm going to use that one pearl later in the game, maybe this turn even, to buy extra cards. I can put these ships in my treasure pool if I want and then use those icons. Or I can keep them from turn to turn until I really need them. So it's possible to build up a huge stack of ships that you can use later in the game. Let's see, I have three, two more Crashing Waves. I will do two points to this guy, and I'll put the rest of them in my treasure pool. So let's say I did want to add this guy to my treasure pool. I would have a total of two shells, two pearls, 
one, two, and a trident. So I could use those to buy cards in the tide if I wanted. So the game continues and the ships will eventually build up. Eventually you won't be able to just stop them here on the top of the, the seas. And you'll have to stop them as they make their way toward the Sea of Man. So that's just a couple of rounds of play. You want to use, you want to find out certain combos to move ships around, to push them together, use other cards to do mass damage at once. Sometimes waiting for cards to reach certain spots will allow you to do more damage. So it's not just necessarily a game of damaging the guy in the lead. You want to hit key ships as they're in certain spots to do, to maximize your damage. So if you have any questions, please post on the 2016 Solitaire Print and Play forum and I can answer those or you can reach me uh, through uh, instant messaging or private messaging on BoardGameGeek. I'm Salty Dog, and you'll see me on the forums. Thanks a lot.